The press conference for leg eight of the Revolution race is going to Lorient. Um, we will run it in English, but you have to ask El Elmetz if you want the translation. And if you guys want to ask a question in French, I can always translate it to the speakers. Um, so, Amagat and I write for the World Ocean Race website. Um, and here we have the seven speakers of the World Ocean Race. Uh, from right to left, Chris Nicholson, Tim Vesta Swind, second to Dane Lorient, Charles Codrelier, Mung Feng, seventh to Dane Lorient, Sam Davis, Tim Messier, winning team today, Barbe Kim, Tim Brunel, <laughs> Charlie and Wright, Tim Alpi Medica, Ian Walker, Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing, Xavi Fernandez, Mark. Um, so I will open with a few, with one question per skipper, and then open the floor to you guys for, for your question. Um, starting with um, the winning skipper today, Sam, congratulations. Um, tell, tell us, you, your team seems to finally have clicked. Well, how do you explain this final success? Um, oh, well, I think we're just uh, still learning, um, and uh, well, we feel like the team clicked quite a long time ago, uh, but it hasn't really shown in the results because these guys are just so good. Um, we're just climbing, getting there, trying to get there. Um, occasionally, we've been making small mistakes, but in this at this level, a small mistake is really expensive. So. Um, Finally, we've done a leg where we didn't make any mistakes, really. <laughs> uh, and, um, and yeah, it's a shorter leg for sure. We, we know that we're good, we can stay with the fleet for the first week of the long legs. And I think our lack of Volvo ocean race experience um, then shows in the oceanic uh, legs. Um, although that, even that's getting better now after we're on leg nine now. Um, but I think this one was a short, short enough leg that we knew we could stay in touch. Um, we've got a lot of Olympic sailors and uh, regatta sailors on board, and um, and I think that really helps. Um, yeah, so that was our strategy: was to to sail like we work, like we always have done, keep learning, keep uh, working hard, and um, not change anything. But we knew it was a short one, and we were in with a good chance. So uh, yeah, we we pushed hard. Thank you. Um, question for the second team today, Chris. Um, it's been quite an incredible journey for your team, really. And when we spoke in Lisbon on the dock before you left, you said that you would be happy with, you know, top four. Second is like, an amazing result. Uh, would you ever, would you have ever imagined? Um, no, to be honest. Um, especially in the conditions, you know, like some very windy, rough conditions, and although we'd sail the boat. We hadn't, we'd, we'd never been out in those conditions, so it's quite a tribute to the people who built the boat and and all the contractors that did all the work to it. It's pretty, I think it's pretty amazing that, that we got the boat here and to finish second was great for us. Okay. Um, third boat, Ocean Racing. Jan, you've mathematically won the race. Well, how do you look at the next leg and what is still at stake? Um, I can't believe we're thinking about the next leg already, we just got off the boat. <laughs> Someone told me the briefing's tomorrow, <laughs> I want to have a day off tomorrow. Um, well, I think before then, I, I, I just want to say well done to SCA and Vessus. I think it's it's quite extraordinary that um, they've managed to turn it around and, and win a leg in such emphatic style. And I think for Vessus to put a new boat on the water with just one week, I don't think I don't think anybody can appreciate quite how hard that is to just complete the race course in those conditions, let alone sail around, you know, with some guys who've never raced together before and no training to get a second. So really for both Sam and Nico and their teams I think fantastic job. Um, for us, I mean um, I, until I see the scoreboard and look at it all, I guess I don't believe it. It's kind of a bit of an anti climax right now. Um, but maybe that's a good thing because we've still got another leg to do. Um, we want to try and win everything we do, from prime races to import races to any leg. This is a privilege to have a chance to sail on the leg of the Volvo. So we're going to hit the next leg just as hard as every other leg, and then you know, then we'll we'll draw breath in Gothenburg and see how it all lies at the end of that. Thank you. So.
Cool. Um, Xavi, you took fourth today in, in Lorient, and your team is uh, moving to fourth place overall. Two points behind Dongfeng. Is the podium still, you know, an objective for Martin? Well, I hope so. I think uh, we had uh, quite a good leg at the end because uh, we keep behind us uh, the three teams uh, we really wanted to, to be. And even if we were fourth, I think it was a very good result for us. And as you say, it's just two points uh, from non Fen and it's one boat in between us uh, in the next leg. And we will try very hard, of course. And, and they, of course, as we know, they are important, so we will try very hard here and in Gothenburg as well. Okay, thank you. Now, taking fifth in uh, Lorient. Maybe a disappointing result, but you are strengthening your second place overall, and you gain two points on Dongfeng. How how do you look at, at, at today's result? I think we're actually uh, quite happy with the fifth. How strange it sounds, because yesterday morning we were dead donkey, and uh, yeah, the guy sailed really well. We broke a sail, of course, it, so that was really painful. And it was our objective to stay all the time close to Abu Dhabi, uh, and maybe have a chance to overtake them. They sailed away from us, so congratulations to them, they did a fantastic event and uh, probably a well-deserved winner uh, at this stage already, so well done Ian and uh, your team, did a fantastic job. But as well, of course, the girls, uh, they took the option, they went by themselves, they had nothing to lose, but they did about the right decision, the investors did exactly the same. So uh, it, was, it was just a race on themselves, but uh, we couldn't beat Abu Dhabi, but we were actually happy in the end that we... Uh, that we beat Don Feng and Alpha Medica because it was important for the points. Thank you. Charlie, um, taking six today in, in Lorient. You, you've always said that your team was about you know, learning and improving and you know, building experience step by step. What, what lessons have you learned this leg and what lessons are you looking forward to learn in the next you know, two weeks remaining in the race? That's tough. Um, yeah, obviously a pretty disappointing result um, for our team, and I just kind of like to echo kind of what Ian and everybody else said. Obviously, a very nice job, you know, to Sam and the girls and Nico for getting the boat back on the water, and Ian for mathematically winning the race, and Javi for getting the fourth place that we wanted to get. <laughs> but um, you know, just just inches here and there, uh, you know, we 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 could have been a little bit better about maybe digging into that last low and staying with our competition, but. You know, it's inches, really. And um, although the result's disappointing, as you can see, you know, the way the boat's pulled in here, it's all pretty close. And you make a couple little mistakes here and there, and you pay for it. So, um, you know, still a leg to go, still hopeful, still going to work real hard. And, um, you know, we can only control our house for certain, and we'll do our best to do that and see where everybody else falls in the end. Okay, thank you. Charles, um, obviously a disappointing result today um, in Brittany, but. How, how do you bounce back from that? And your team has done that in the past, with, you know, after breaking the mask, coming back from you know, a difficult time. Well, how are you going to do that once again? I hope we'll do as good as we did last time, but it's not the same story. Last time we break the mask, we didn't make a big mistake. This time I think we made some mistake, and so we are a bit disappointed for sure. It's a very worst result. The first time we fish in a mini lake without being in the well, in the first yeah, lake, uh, team, so yeah, it's not a funny one. We are happy for the girl. Uh, we should have stayed with her then. <laughs> Honestly, one of the reasons why we didn't stay, we say they sell away, but they are so unlucky. We should not stay with. That was that was why, why we. Did. I think that, that we take that in account. We were in the good side, and I don't know why we just decided to come back on a very bad uh, tack and. Uh, I say, oh, if you go with a girl, uh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> I, I think we also have a pressure, and uh, under pressure, sometimes you take bad, bad decision. It was uh, an easy decision looking from now, looking from outside, but when you are in the match and you have the pressure. And that's what makes the difference between the winner, Abu Dhabi, and, and the other one is uh, when you are ahead, uh, you have the pressure, and it's not easy. And well done to the. This team, we had a great fight with them during a, a few legs, but uh, I think they deserve uh, to win. And they were the favorite, and it's not easy to to be uh, leaving the race from the start and to be the favorite and to stay ahead. So well done to uh, well done to the girls today. Thank you. Okay, um, if 
anyone has a question? Can take the mic and from Christina. Steve Redgrave, when he won, I think his third gold medal rowing for Great Britain, um, he said very publicly in front of everybody, if anybody sees me in a rowing boat again, feel free to shoot me. And then he ended up doing the next Olympics, but nobody shot him. So um, I don't know. I think that the, the Volvo race takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot out of you physically, as you can tell by the state of us sat here trying to stay awake. Uh, it takes a lot, of, a lot out of you mentally. Uh, not just the race, but the whole build-up to the race. So I think you need to just take time away, and um, and then we'll see what the future holds. I think you know my my heart is with Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing. We put you know four years of work into this, and um, right now I want to go and enjoy the moment uh, in Abu Dhabi as soon as I can. Does it sound like a sweet revenge from the last edition? I don't think it's revenge. I, I think that's too strong a word. Uh, it feels sweet, and I but I think. You know, we all improve, we learn, we learn by experience, and sometimes those experiences are not that enjoyable, sometimes they hurt, and you know, everybody here has enjoyed the success of winning at some stage in their career, and we've all suffered the pain of, of defeat, and that's what makes us who we are, and it makes us better sailors, and um, it's when you go through the bad times, it, you know, it makes the good times that much more enjoyable so if it was all good times then you'd get bored of it you have to go through a bit of pain to uh, to understand what it feels like when you do well anyone else bonjour à tous c'est une question qui s'adresse à tous les skippers je la pose en français est-ce que vous pensez que c'est encore nécessaire d'avoir un équipage de féminin avec euh, plus de filles que de garçons Est-ce qu'elles ont besoin de ça pour gagner J'ai l'impression que non. J'aimerais bien avoir votre avis là-dessus. Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, you all speak French right now. <laughs> um, do we still need three more crew members on board the female boat Or is it not necessary for them to win And it's for all of you to answer. I can say, like, I've, I've not sailed with girls on board and I've not sailed with 12 people. Um, but I'm pretty sure that it would have made no difference to them winning this leg. You know, they won this leg because of their tactics and strategy and boat speed in light winds, where it's probably better to have eight people than 11 people sailing the boat. And I think a lot of the time, I can imagine it's a bit of an inconvenience having so many people on watch changes and more crew kit and more bags and more more weight on board from all the equipment and food. and So for sure it's an advantage inshore and with the close boat handling. Offshore, I can't speak, you have to ask Sam. And But for me, it would have played no part in them winning this leg. Um, I think the question's for you, Sam. Um, I think there's times when it would be easier with less people on board, like Ian said. Like um, you could put the crew weight in the right place, whereas we fill all the bunks along the side so you don't have so much choices to where people sleep. Um, but that's just one example. What's changed is, yeah, they're very busy. Um, it's very hard getting, if you have everyone on deck call, then you can't, you, no one can get dressed in time because there's too many people tripping over each other. Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, for sure, in, sh in shore, in port, um, there is a strength issue. These boats are really physically hard to sail and the way the guys sell them, um, uh, you, we need those extra hands to be competitive um, in terms of the manoeuvres, furling the sails, hoisting the sails, um, around the race course. Um, 
And I think the, the difference is calculated on body weight, so that would probably be equivalent with muscle power. Uh, of sure there are advantages. We have extra hands and extra brains. Um, I think when it was really windy in the Bay of Biscay, we had a couple of girls who um, didn't feel so good. Um, and But that's not a problem to us because we actually just let them rest um, because we, we knew we'd need them later. So I think in a guy's boat, if you have two people who go down, um, then you get very short-handed with only eight. So, uh, yeah, there are advantages that that help us. Um, but again, disadvantages as well. I, th I think I'd, I'd consider going with maybe less on some of the legs next time. Nicholson had a question. Did we get you up too early this morning? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. We, we are French speakers now who will uh, come to answer your questions. So, yes. Let's keep us on. Really. <laughs> Thank you, guys.